Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is an unexpected continuation from my previous video. I'm going to recap the portion that pertains to this video, but I'll leave the link to my previous video in the description box below for those interested. This video is an interesting one to say the least. When I set out to compile my previous video, my intention was to talk about the exchange and handling of the PR situation that occurred on Twitter between Tati Westbrook and Norvina of Anastasia Beverly Hills. I had no idea that what I thought was a fairly small portion of that video would end up leading me to analyze an influencer's social media accounts for the purposes of assessing whether their following is authentic or purchased. The results were shocking. Of course, before we get into the video, let me just preface it by saying that the intent of this video is not to bully this individual. I am simply using him as an example because I feel like if you're going to engage in fraudulent behavior on social media, such as buying subscribers or followers and manipulating brands into sending you free products, and you get caught, in my opinion, you deserve to be put on blast. That said, I obviously cannot guarantee the results of my findings to be 100% accurate because I can't subpoena his bank records as proof of purchase, but I can provide receipts with supporting explanation as to why it's highly probable that his social media existence is nothing more than smoke and mirrors, so let's get into it. Okay, so a brief recap of my previous video. You'll recall that I spoke about a makeup artist by the name of Kelly James MUA, who inserted himself in the Twitter exchange between Tati and Norvina and ended up scoring a spot on the ABH PR list as seen in the following thread. His first interaction was when he replied to Norvina's response to Tati saying, Oh my god, what? I've been trying to get you to notice me for two years on Instagram. Norvina responded to Kelly saying, I'm so bad. Okay, I saw in love. Clearly, Kelly James was seeking a little more than simply being noticed by Norvina because he responded back to her and said, How do I get on your PR list or your attention? Well, Kelly, you already had her attention, so what you're really looking for is access to PR, let's be honest. As if that wasn't cringy enough, he took it a step further and threw a guilt trip at Norvina when he followed his PR inquiry up with, I'm like the only one out of all my friends that's not on your list. Norvina responded to Kelly and said, I'm adding you on in her place. I will ask Natalia to add reason for removal as replaced by Kelly James MUA. Again, to clarify, Norvina was not adding him on in Tati's place. She was adding him in place of someone who was caught selling ABH PR. Kelly then replied inquiring about shipping and left off by telling Norvina how she had no idea how over the moon he was. Okay, so that is it for the recap. Now, shortly after my previous video went live, I received a notification that Kelly had tweeted at me. He has since gone on to delete our entire conversation along with several incriminating tweets from his timeline. Now, being that I didn't intend on making a follow-up video, I didn't screenshot all his tweets, but luckily, a few of my followers came through for me and I was able to compile the timeline in its entirety. So it's starts off with him tweeting at me saying at here for the T2, for one, I don't appreciate you mentioning me without asking, in brackets, reporting for defamation, and two, I was making a point that smaller people lie myself and I know he meant like, but Freudian slip perhaps? Anyway, he says, I was making a point that smaller people like myself find it difficult to be noticed, wasn't fully asking to be on, and then the tweet cuts off, and since he's gone on to delete everything from his timeline, I wasn't able to see the remainder of the tweet, however, it appears that he copied the same comment to my YouTube video, so picking up where we left off on Twitter, he says, I wasn't fully asking to be on the PR list, but making a point that I wasn't and how to be noticed by a brand like themselves. Never have I asked to be on someone's PR list so directly. I support the brand and buy almost all products regardless of the PR list, but thank you for shitting on me as an artist that's looking for recognition. Okay, so firstly, this comment is borderline illegible and I actually have no idea what he was getting at, and secondly, I'm gonna be blunt, he He's a liar. He has an extensive history of using manipulative tactics similar to those used on Norvina to garner PR from at least three brands, all of which I have receipts for. Moving back to Twitter for now, I quote tweeted Kelly's tweet and said, I don't need to ask you. Good luck with that. Reporting for defamation of your own words, girl, bye. He responds back to me and says, no, reporting for defamation for you taking what I said and then talking shit about me on a public level to thousands of people. To which I responded with, I didn't talk talk shit, it's my opinion of your tweets and I stand by it. Kelly replies with, yeah you did, calling me tacky and whatever else. I'm just trying to get recognition for the hard work that I put out there like many other artists and I'm trying to grow and you come along and knock me back to the bottom for views on YouTube. I replied and said, it is tacky in my opinion. OMG, I did not RSVP for your pity party. I know pity is spelled wrong, you can roast me in the comments if you want. Anyway, he replies back to me and says, I don't want a pity party from anyone. I just want you to 
to see what damage is done by people like you. I've done nothing wrong and I'm getting tweets and messages of people being so horrible for nothing. Let's stop here for a second and discuss. First, I am not required to obtain permission from the individual in which I speak of in my videos nor do I ever do so as a courtesy. The only time I reach out to an influencer prior to compiling a video is to obtain a statement which I did not feel was necessary in this case as the video was not about him. Now with respect to him advising that he was reporting me for defamation, in order to do so the burden of proof would be on him. The legal definition of defamation is as follows. The art of communicating false statements about a person that could injure the reputation of that person. My exact statements I made with respect to Kelly in my previous video were, number one, at this point Kelly James takes it upon himself to hijack the thread. Number two, Kelly goes on to press Norvina even further when he says how do I get on your PR list or your attention. I'm like the only one out of all my friends that's not on your list. Number three, I mean this is so pathetic in my opinion, I get the importance of being noticed by brands but shamelessly asking the president of a prominent makeup brand to be on their PR list is just so tacky to me. Number four, the entitlement of this individual indicating that he is the only one out of all his friends who isn't on the list as if Norvina owes it to him to include him as well would be enough for me to blacklist him from PR altogether. Number five, well Kelly James, I guess it was your lucky day. Can't say that I personally respect the way you went about it, but moving on. These were the only references I made to Kelly in my previous video which you can verify yourself as it still remains live on my channel. In opinion of his own tweets and or actions is not defamation. In regards to him saying that I came along and knocked him back to the bottom for views on YouTube and that he wants me to see the damage that's done by people like me because he's done nothing wrong, I'm about to show you the damage that's done on social media by people like him and how his actions are preventing deserving individuals from reaching their goals. So here's where everything got real. One of my followers happened to skim through his Twitter timeline and found this tweet from the exact same day being February 16th shortly after he was cleared for ABHPR. The tweet reads, so it's official, I'm on everyone's PR list except at Jeffree Star's and he's my fave person ever. Being that Kelly had said in his comment to me that he's never directly asked for PR and I guess technically he isn't asking but he's certainly pulling from the same book of roundabout tactics he used on Norvina so I attached a screenshot of the tweet in the thread and said sir please explain this deleted tweet. Kelly responds to me and says I mean reposting someone's edited tweet is a bit ridiculous question mark question mark you've literally just tweeted me a photoshopped picture. Now the follower who sent this screenshot initially tweeted the link to me but by the time I saw the tweet and clicked on the link the tweet was unavailable so I figured it was deleted. Here's our Twitter exchange and as you can see I asked her what the tweet said and she replied by sharing a screenshot with me. Now he was likely only relying on the screenshot I posted in the thread and completely unaware of the exchange between myself and my follower wherein she linked this supposedly photoshopped tweet from his own account. Therefore it wouldn't have even been possible for it to be photoshopped as he claimed it to be. But even if we only had the screenshot to rely on there simply wasn't enough time to photoshop the tweet nor would my follower give a fuck to go to that extent so I responded to him and said oh my god you're a beggar and a liar and I suggested going on the wayback machine if he couldn't recall tweeting same. Kelly replied to me saying that tweet is legit photoshopped like how the fuck can someone like you not even see that. Now here's the gag as I was scrolling through his timeline guess what I found this supposedly photoshopped tweet. He hadn't even deleted it from his timeline yet he claimed it was altered even going so far as to insult my intelligence with respect to same so I confronted him. I tweeted at him linking the tweet from his own timeline and said sir not to be dramatic but the quote unquote photoshop tweet is still on your feed dot 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 awkward. Needless to say I never heard back from him but I continued to scroll through his feed and started noticing a pattern with respect to PR inquiries on his behalf. On February 13th 2018 which was three days prior to his interaction with Norvina he tweeted I think I'm the only beauty influencer on Instagram that isn't on at Jeffree Star's PR list. I've literally bought most of his products though still. Prior to that on January 26th 2018 he replied to one of Jeffree Star's tweets and said I am so fucking ready for this new collection. It's by far my fave ever. I swear I'm the only beauty influencer not on your PR list so please I'ma buy every single thing in brackets as always. Going back to 2017 now on June 17th 2017 he tweeted I think I'm the only beauty influencer on Instagram that didn't get at Jeffree Star's summer collection package. Oh well I'll still own them. On November 28th 2017 he tweeted literally every brand follows me and sends me PR except at Tarte Cosmetics. It's a tough life for sure. Another pattern I picked up on from his Twitter 
Twitter feed was his desperation to be noticed mainly by Jeffree Star and Manny MUA and listen, I get how it could be exciting to be acknowledged by your favorite influencer but again, repeatedly tweeting at them using manipulative tactics to guilt them into noticing and or following you says a lot about your character in my opinion. On April 11th, 2017 he tweeted, at Manny MUA always likes my tweets but not my Instagram posts. On that same day being April 11th, 2017 he also tweeted, at Manny MUA been liking a lot of my tweets recently, maybe he'll stalk my Instagram, then I can die happy. On April 21st, 2017, he tweeted, At Manny MUA, at Jeffree Star, you always liking my stuff on here on Instagram, how you not gonna follow me? P.S. See you Saturday, which was their meetup in London. On the same day, April 21st, 2017, he tweeted, What do I have to do to get at Nikki Tutorials to notice me on Instagram? The next day, on April 22nd, 2017, he tweeted, At Manny MUA literally likes and retweets everything I post. How do I get him to follow me on Instagram? I want to be his best friend. On April 23rd, 2017, he tweeted, When will at Jeffree Star and or at Manny MUA follow me? Sad face, they both like my shit all the time on Insta and here, a million crying face emojis. On April 23rd, 2017, he tweeted, Makes me sad how Jeffree Star Cosmetics, Morphe, Benefit Cosmetics follow me on Instagram but at Jeffree Star and at Manny MUA don't. On April 24th, 2017, he tweeted, This month at Jeffree Star and at Manny MUA have tweeted me, liked my Instagram posts, and had pictures with me. If they follow me, I will die. On April 25th, 2017, after Manny liked his Instagram post, he posted a photo of the notification to Instagram stories and wrote, I see you at Manny MUA. On April 11th, 2017, he tweeted, at Manny MUA, I see you liking my picture. On June 16th, 2017, he tweeted, at Manny MUA, always liking my tweets, but still don't follow me on here or Instagram. On September 5th, 2017, 2017, he tweeted, At Manny MUA, I think it's time for you to follow me considering you like and reply to every tweet I tweet at you. That's about all I can take of that, you guys. There are plenty more examples, but I think you can see that this isn't just someone looking for recognition of their hard work, as he said in his tweet to me. The irony of that tweet, and I'll put it up again for your reference, is that he likens himself to other artists looking to grow and gain recognition, but what he's actually doing is making a mockery of his peers and other artists by creating a false online presence in order to get get ahead of them. What he's doing makes up a significant portion of social media and it's become a huge issue for legitimate influencers, artists, and advertisers alike. Fake followers, it's a lot more common than you think, but how can you tell whether an influencer's following is the real deal? A lot of what you see on social media is a facade and I'm going to use Kelly as an example to show you what to look out for in determining the legitimacy of an influencer's following. As I said in the beginning of this video, this is not bullying. When you participate in this type of behavior, you run the risk of getting caught and when you get caught, you can't turn around and play victim. Anyway, let's get into his social media presence. I'm mainly gonna focus on his Instagram account as this is the platform he directed Norvina to when he told her that he'd been trying to get her to notice him for the past two years. And this is also where he has the largest following, currently sitting at 78.3 thousand followers. As I was scrolling through his feed, I became intrigued by the lack of engagement on his posts in relation to his follower count. Now, I can tell you what I think, but I'm not gonna sit here and accuse or speculate about something unless they have receipts. So I enlisted someone with experience in assessing the validity of an influencer's social media statistics for potential job opportunities to help me out. You may say this is an all-time low of petty for here for the tea, but I say it's important to bring awareness to the deceptive side of social media. So I asked this person specific questions and she provided her opinion together with supporting evidence using Kelly's Instagram account as an example. The first question was, can you tell me what people should look for when trying to determine whether an influencer influencer's following is legitimate? Answer, there are several ways to determine if an influencer's followers on social media are legitimate. The first thing you want to look at is the influencer's followers with suspicious names. For example, here are a few screenshots of Kelly's followers. Now, the companies who sell these quote-unquote services are really good at designing the quote-unquote followers, also known as bots. However, many remain an obvious site with names such as free followers, follow for follow, gain followers, etc. Influencers with larger followings usually have a lot of followers within the same area of interest of his or her posts. This occurs as a result of tagging their content, companies, products, and interests displayed in their posts. A computer engineer, for example, would have a lot of followers interested in that field and his or her followers would usually post similar content or follow others within this field. The same goes for lifestyle influencers, vloggers, beauty influencers, and any other category. Typically, an influencer who has purchased followers will have so-called red flag accounts. These accounts are usually private, some 
containing more information than others, some bot accounts will have profile pictures and some will be what's called an empty account. No profile picture, no posts, nothing. These are considered to be low-level bot accounts which make up a good portion of Kelly's followers as seen here. Typically, faker purchased accounts follow thousands within all types of interests yet have very few followers themselves in comparison which is a major red flag. You can see in this example, and by the way, these are just a few pulled from his account, but you can see the ratio is disproportionate which, as I said, is common for bot accounts. Now, bots can also be seen on legitimate influencers' accounts or even your friends' accounts, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're purchased. Some bots follow people based on keywords, so don't go sifting through Manny MUA's followers to try and spot a bot and then accuse him of buying followers. You will more than likely find bot accounts on legitimate accounts, but if most of their following appears to be bots, then yes, they are likely purchasing them. A much more accurate way of determining whether an influencer buys followers is to go by the engagement on their posts. If an influencer has thousands of followers, it can be expected that their engagement rates are proportionate to their follower count. Typically, the way you'd calculate an influencer's average engagement rate on Instagram is by dividing the number of likes and comments by their follower count, which would give you a percentage. Now, if you were to throw Kelly's numbers into a calculation app, those apps cannot differentiate between real likes and bot likes, and since likes are super easy to buy and comments are not, purchase likes would bring his average up, so in cases where it's suspected that there are purchase likes, it's far more accurate to calculate the engagement rate on likes and comments separately by post. Here are eight of Kelly's posts, for example, the first being February 8th, 2018. He has 2,438 likes and only 25 comments. August 13, 2017, he has 2,223 likes and only 25 comments. August 7th, 2017, he has 1,316 likes and only 7 comments, and so on. If you calculated his engagement percentage the old-fashioned way, he'd quote-unquote pass because his likes are good, but as I said, this is likely due to purchasing. The engagement on his comments is particularly low on every post, which is another indication that his likes and followers are purchased. Basically, the reason there are so few comments in relation to his follower count is because no one is home. You know what I'm saying? So starting off with the likes from the February 8th post, he has 2,436 likes divided by 78.3 thousand followers at the time of calculation times 100 equals 3.109 engagement rate for likes on that specific post. For comments, he has 32 comments divided by 78.3 thousand times 100 equals 0.041%. Instagram is known for being the highest engaging social media platform and it is estimated that an influencer of his size should have a 2.4% engagement rate. Now yes, in this specific post he clears the bare minimum of 2.4% on likes but none of his posts come close in terms of comments. Why? Because it's super hard to buy comments. In this case, the engagement percentage of his comments is more indicative of his overall engagement rate which is way below the threshold for an account of his size. Another sign that an influencer is buying followers is when their daily increase or decrease of followers is inconsistent with their content. For instance, say an influencer gains 10,000 Instagram followers on February 1st, yet they didn't post anything, and if they did post something, and the engagement rate on that post is minimal, it doesn't make sense that they would gain 10,000 followers on that day. How do you check this? You can go on Social Blade, which is a statistics website that allows you to track stats and measure growth across multiple social media platforms, including Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. This is a screenshot of Kelly's Social Blade for his Instagram account. You'll obviously notice that he's hemorrhaging subscribers daily, which we'll touch on in a bit, but what you'll also notice are these graphs categorized by total followers, total following, and total uploads. When you hover over the graphs, you can pick up statistics for particular days, which you can then cross-reference with the influencer's Instagram post of the same date if there is one. As I said earlier, if there's no post on Instagram, yet you see the influencer has gained 10,000 followers using the followers gained graph on Social Blade, it's highly probable that they bought followers on that day. Even if there is a post, it's important to consider the engagement on same and whether it warrants a 10k gain. So as you can see, these two graphs were pulled from Kelly's Social Blade account. The top shows total followers gained and the bottom shows total uploads. These two graphs should reasonably follow each other with no stagnation or spikes. Gaining over 40,000 followers with less than 200 posts is highly unlikely. The graphs should look something like this, showing gradual growth with no abnormal spikes. Now, of of course, there can be a day where you gain a lot more followers than others, but again, there would usually be a post or a video or something to support that growth. Also keep in mind that this is in combination with the other red flags mentioned. This is not just one spike in his graph 
that were going on. Anyway, my next question was, where do you buy fake followers, likes, or views, etc.? Answer, there are many social marketing companies that offer these services known as Instagram automation and business quick start and boosts, a quick search on Google for help with your digital marketing on social media, or even a direct search for buying fake followers or likes on Google sends you to the most commonly used and best reviewed site at this time called Buzzoid. Next question, how do fake followers work? Does the company you buy from stagger them so they go quote unquote unnoticed or are they dropped all at once resulting in the sudden spike on Social Blade? Answer, this really depends on what the buyer is willing to pay. It can be quite cheap with many services charging around 1 to 10 US dollars for every 1,000 followers. But you get what you pay for. In most cases, these will be bots. This service will usually give you upwards of 1,000 followers within a couple of days to a week and pages like Buzzoid also offer to drop them when the buyer posts to avoid suspicion from Instagram's algorithms to catch them. But for an extra fee, of course. These will have no interaction or engagement. The influencer will then have to buy likes and views in addition to this. If you really want to go into detail in finding out if an influencer has purchased followers, it's a good idea to check if the accounts that follow them also like their posts. If the followers are purchased or fake, then they most likely never like the influencer's posts if they buy from this kind of service. Next question, does Instagram or any other social media platform have filters for fake followers? Answer, at this point in time, no. The human filter is the only true way by analysis of an influencer's social activity through social blade investigation and calculation. There are services out there which claim they can do it for a fee, but those typically do not work and they end up scamming people for money or false surveys to unlock. The best way to find out if an influencer has fake or purchased followers is to do the hard work yourself or hire a professional to do so. Next question, why does Kelly's social blade account for Instagram show that he loses a lot of followers every day? Is that Instagram purging? Answer, Instagram does mass sorting daily, specifically inactive account sorting, which means these bot accounts get deleted regularly due to inactivity, causing a slow decrease in followers. This is a typical sign of fake or purchased followers. Next question, in your opinion, do you believe Kelly's following to be fake or purchased? If so, why and by how much? Answer, yes. After further analyzing this account, it seems that there is never anyone tagging this person in posts. If you have a follower base of almost 80,000, it seems unlikely that none of your followers would ever tag you or use your hashtag. This person also isn't very engaging towards his followers. He tags a lot of brands and prominent people in his industry, which seems like attention seeking instead of interacting, showing interest and engaging with his followers. Looking into the statistics of the above mentioned, I can only look back so far and therefore can only estimate based on all information gathered that at the very least, the last 40,000 of his followers are fake. But personally, I would only comfortably be able to confirm that commentators are his real followers, making it potentially 5,474 real followers in total, not accounting that some might comment several times on different posts, so it may be even less. This is a very generous estimate. If you look at this chart made up of all the tags he uses and the percentage of times he's used them on all 161 posts, these tags are simply not enough to drive that number of followers to his page. He doesn't use any community tags or geo tags, which would be the tags to use if you were trying to drive traffic to your page and it's not like his followers are coming from another social media platform. So where are the numbers coming from? Another thing I was told is that a new trend with people who buy Instagram followers is to do so while hosting a giveaway as it's less likely you'll get caught. Remember earlier I talked about the spikes on the social blade graph being consistent with an influencer's Instagram engagement? Well, if you host a giveaway on a certain day, your engagement, likes, comments, and followers are likely to spike on those days. So if you buy followers on the same day as your giveaway, the spike on the graph would likely look consistent with the giveaway and the bot followers are concealed or less noticeable. By the way, Kelly did not have any giveaways on his Instagram account. Also of interest, the day following my interaction with Kelly, I found this tweet on his timeline and after I asked the person to DM me, Kelly blocked me. The person did not DM me so I couldn't verify the information but the tweet said, where's the hard work? You've posted to your Instagram once this year, dot dot dot. You also don't post to your YouTube, which is true by the way. They followed that tweet by saying most of your followers and likes are fake. Dot dot dot, you've been blacklisted from the PR company I work for. Again, I can't confirm that, but it certainly wouldn't surprise me. Anyway, you guys, that was a ton of information. I hope it made sense and I hope you learned something. The thing is, people like this take opportunities from deserving artists or influencers and advertisers and or brands need to do better when it comes to vetting these accounts if they truly want to get the most bang for their buck. In regards to the ABH PR situation, I know ABH doesn't 
doesn't go by follower count and I respect that 100%. But I personally know a few makeup artists specifically on Instagram who work their asses off producing content, trying to grow their platform, while working a low paying full time job who would give their left nut to be on ABH's PR list, but they would never ask. They do makeup because they're passionate about it. They love to create and inspire. They work hard to accomplish their goals. Shouldn't those be the ones representing the ABH name? Look, if Norvina needs help scouting, I can personally name three MUAs off the top of my head who deserve some recognition. Anyway, you guys, look, I think it's important for you to see that cheating your way to the top is never the answer. There is nothing more satisfying than achieving your goals through hard work and dedication. Any social media influencer will tell you that. I'm going to leave you with some advice from Kelly James and I suggest you take it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram and busted ass Snapchat. We have cancelled Vero by the way so it's unnecessary to follow me there but all my socials are here for the T2. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll talk to you again soon in my next video. Bye! Are you a good liar? Um, I don't lie. I know everyone says that but I don't. I just don't see the point. It's a waste of time. Like, why even lie to someone when most of the time you're going to get found out. 99.9999% .99 of the time you're going to get caught out. So I don't lie because I have a fear of like being caught. Um, I'm, I really believe in karma and I feel like if I lie, like everyone's going to lie to me.